All right, so uh, I like to kick off a tasting with whiskey straight away. So the first whiskey is the Glen Elgin, if I'm hopefully pronouncing it right, the 1995 24 year old single cask at 50.7%. So yeah, if, uh, please get, pour that stuff into your glass and I might hand it over to Tetsuya to um, please tell us about this bottling. I think you're still oh. muted, mate. Sorry. You're muting. There we go. Yep. Uh, first of all, uh, hello, my name is Tatsuya. Uh, runs a hotel and the bar in Highlander Inn, originally from Japan. Uh, I've been living in Scotland for just over 20 years and started working in this industry work in a bar uh, since age I was 18. So pretty much all my work experience, I only know bar work. Uh, yeah, started doing this original bottling just after Millennium 2001. So doing for 20 years, we are very small company. So we used to release one bottling a year now we do a uh, maybe five, six, seven, eight bottling every year. So this one, now we are going to taste actually Glen Elgin, not Elgin, Oliver, <laughs> Elgin. <laughs> it's not just you, many people say Glen Elgin. So this one is range called annual single cask release, which is, uh, we started from this bottling annual single cask release. We will taste later on another range, but this is, we do only once a year. This is 2020 bottling. We are going to taste later on 2019 bottling. So single cask bottling and this artwork designed by my friend from Netherlands, Hans Delis. He's a quite well-known whiskey artist in Europe and this one always come with tasting note from one of the reading uh, industry expert. And the 2020 bottling done by Sukinda Shin from uh, owner of the Whiskey Exchange in London, one of the biggest whiskey retailer in UK. Yeah, people say, how did you manage to get tasting note from Sukinda? Because we are good friends. I think. So before I talk too much, just pour the drum and let's taste. And the biggest difference is uh, this bottling and rest of the Highlander in bottling. This is the most important bottling for us. So once we bottled, we divided. Can you hear me, by the way? Yeah. A divided, we have now six, seven, eight importer, not quite all over the world, mainly in Europe and Asia. So we divided seven way, eight way. Japan is one of the oldest importer. So once we bottled, the allocation for each country is quite small. So depends on how many outcome, uh, outcome, total number of bottle. So some case only 24 bottle for Australia and or maybe 36 bottle for Japan, depends on how many bottle in total. So I can't remember how many bottle I shipped to Australia this time, not a lot. So few, very few lucky people can grab the bottle. So let's taste. Well, whilst we're tasting, so all the whiskey uh, that we're trying tonight, the, the three that we're selling, um, will be available to you guys, uh, public sale at 7 p.m. Sydney, Melbourne time, but will be available for yourself uh, 30 minutes earlier at 6.30. So um, download the whiskey list app because that's where we'll be available to buy. So if you haven't downloaded and set it up, you've got um, about 25 minutes or so to download the app and get yourself ready to buy. Uh, this whiskey that we're tasting, number one, there's very limited supply. So there's only a few bottles available. So um, yeah, thank you. Just uh, wanted to, to share that out loud. And at 6.30, I think we might break quickly to, to let people start buying as well. 
before the general public sale at seven. Over to you, Tatsuya. Okay, that's a 24 year old Grenelle game, a refill bourbon hogs head. And uh, I actually tasted it yesterday morning because we had a meeting, we chat with Oliver and Chris yesterday. I thought the tasting is changed to yesterday. So after I clean my teeth, so taste of toothpaste, then I try this whiskey. So doesn't work after I clean my teeth. So today, obviously I clean my teeth, then I had a one strong coffee, so my palate is not bad. So it's very fruity and what Sukinda say and palate, this is not palate, should be, this is no misprint, I just found. A nose is sweet and grassy, rich and syrupy. Yeah, I agree this grass, grassy part. It is actually taste of fresh grass or smell of fresh grass when you cut up your garden. What do you think? And that this, once you bought this one here, it's misprinting. Should be nose, taste, and finish. But I didn't check. This is palette, finish, finish. But should be all the <laughs> nose, palette. palette, and the finish. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no one perfect. Kelvin and Yao, what, what do you guys think of this whiskey? Amazing, man. Sure, really good. Yeah, so good. So juicy, like um, on the top of watermelon rind for the vini on the nose, for straight away. There is a touch of waxiness. You know? It's reminding me of like cl almost Kleinelish style. <laughs> I, it is. It's totally different distillery. But mm. uh, 23, 24 years old. Yeah, that style of whiskey reminds me sort of Kleinelish as well. Yeah. yeah. That mineral. Rancio cask. <laughs> really. And now Scotland or Europe into spring and summer. And this is whiskey for spring and summertime. But you guys now into autumn, then <laughs> winter. So I don't know. So this is can be good appellative whiskey. Good whiskey for anyone. Our, our autumn and winter here is the same as a Scottish spring and summer. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have summer here. Same, same, yeah. same weather. And obviously, the Sukinda's tasting notes say uh, a lovely fruit of kiwi, cranberry, vanilla, and banana, which is typical flavor come from American white oak. I personally like second refill cask. Talking to bar downstairs with guests, and some people misunderstood. Many people know cask use more than once. So approximately maybe three, four times, depends on how they use, how long they use for each maturation. Some people misunderstood, fast fill. Many people say fast fill sherry cask, wow, McLaren Grand Reserva. First fill is a best part, and second refill is second best part. Doesn't work like that, and I kind of disagree. If it's short maturation, like a eight years old, nine, maximum 10 years old, if it's fresh sherry cask, sometimes works really well. But if it's sherry cask, leave too long, 20, 25 years can be, eggy, too much sherry, overpowered. So I often select second refill cask, but has been matured longer, 18, 19, 20, 21 years. Sorry, I'm in the office, phone's ringing, but I don't need to pick up phone. Just ignore, maybe next 10 seconds, disappear. <laughs> uh, my style of cask. Oh, first of all, I need to say, uh, after we bottle whiskey like this, receive lot of comment, oh, wow, I tasted new bottling. It was really, really good. Well done. But actually, I hadn't done the much because certainly I'm not producer. What I'm doing, just 
pick up a cask, I mean, taste cask, correct cask, and uh, choose a cask. So somebody made this whiskey 24 years ago, 24 years later, I was offered and I selected. And people say, well done, choosing cask is not that difficult. If I receive five samples and all of them are oh, good, this is good, or oh, this is amazing, or oh, this is another fantastic one, I can pick any cask. Difficult part today is, it's not like a 20 years ago, 20 years ago, pretty much like that. If I received 15 samples, wow, good, good, interesting, this is excellent. So it could be any cask. Today, if I receive 20 casks, excuse my language, I often say, oh, this is shit, pesh, rubbish, reject. So really difficult to pick cask I like from the 20 samples. Yeah, I don't know. If you are doing this job for reasonably long time, you can see differences. The quality of cask today is difficult to pick. So any comment on this whiskey? Free to say. Yeah, you can say negative things as well. I'm seeing some of the comments come in. So George says delicious, tasting notes are spot on. Matt says delicious as well. I love the grassiness and the fruit. So I totally agree, Matt. That's um, there's a freshness to it. And I imagine the older it gets, the more fruitier this, this whiskey is going to get. Mm -hmm. And Toby's, Toby's saying fresh as well. Just conscious of time, I think we might jump into whiskey number two, which tonight is going back to my list, the secret Orkney from Highland Park. So not so secret. <laughs> but uh, Kelvin, I might hand it over to you to walk us through this one. Secret Orkney? <laughs> sure. So this one, I believe it's a, a selection done by Tatsuya-san and uh, the guys at Rudder as well, yeah? Kitakaji-san? No, Kelvin, that's actually not true. That's you? Selected by, <laughs> selected by Kitakaji, yep. Kiyoshi Kitakaji, and the owner of Hairanga in Tokyo. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Yeah. I see. So I, I haven't tasted it yet. All right. You haven't tasted it yet? All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you have a sample? No sample? No sample. I've got a bottle, but this is for, I bought for archive purpose. I display bar downstairs. So I will taste when I go to Tokyo next time. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so um, uh, it's an Orkney, 21 years old from 1998. Did Kitakaji-san give any tasting notes on this one? Uh -huh. uh, I don't have with, the, with me the tasting note. Yep. Have you got one? Okay. Yep. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, knowing his Kitakaji style, he really liked really good balanced whiskey. And same like you, you know, a lot of times it's a refuel cask, right? So where the spirit is really shining through. You can smell on this, it's just really elegant. Uh, just a touch of smoke there. Very malty. Have a taste, guys. Mm. I want to I know, about Tsuyoshi yep. talking about whiskey and he emphasized the flavor uh, profile. It's a yep. berry, strawberry. Yeah. Okay. Berry, so he said, for this bottle, yeah, yeah. it's more. I maybe mean, it's not berry, but like green. I am not getting berry, but <laughs> we're getting like a green grape, mm, like a like green grape character. But straight up, you get the smokiness on the palate, and, and that nice juicy multi Holland Park back there. Yeah? Back a little bit nectarine. Mm. Is that Kelvin? Yes. Is that really smoky or mild or smoky? Quite smoky for uh, Orkney, yeah. There's a lot of cars that are quite tame on the smoke. I would say mm -hmm. it's quite smoky up front, yeah. Uh, for 21 years, I think, yeah. Mm. Pete is right. still Pete is still there after 21 years. And knowing Kitakaji-san, you know, there's always that hidden fruitiness at the back there. Yeah. So you get the smoke at the start and I get this nice yeah. burst of juiciness. He yeah. likes an uh, off-fruit character. I like a slightly, yeah. slightly, uh, slightly overripe fruit character. There's a for Kitakaji. Right. Say, like a smoky whiskey, quite often my experience, and this is fact, say, 
some uh, whiskey, let's say Highland Park, especially if it's single cask bottling, some people say, oh, wow, this is very smoky for Highland Park. And on the other hand, sometimes, some case, wow, this is very mild smokiness for mm -hmm. Highland Park. Could be happen to any smoky whiskey, Kalila, yeah. Lagavuri. Mm -hmm. Reason why people say, oh, Ardbeg is 55 ppm, mm -hmm. extremely smoky. But this is actually just level of, how can I say, the indication of how smoky it is. When distillery or the malted barrel, if it's zero smoke, zero ppm, this is dead clear, zero smokiness. Some distillery, let's say Kalila order 20 ppm to Costa, hello, this is Kalila distillery. Could you deliver 10 ton of 20 ppm malted barrel, please? But doesn't happen like this, right? 20 ppm, they cannot control precisely every batch 20 ppm. Sometimes it can be 16, sometimes it can be 24. Mm -hmm. So if you look at smoky whiskey individually, individual cask, some cask can be 20 ppm, yep. but some can be 30 ppm. Right, it's right. not a huge error. It's really difficult to control the smokiness. So for example, I buy smoked macro from supermarket, vacuum pack, vacuumed. And sometimes I say to my wife, wow, this is very smoky this time. And sometimes, oh wow, so really, did you pick up smoked macro? That's not much smoky flavor. So exactly the same things. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. Question, what's the uh, story behind this wonderful label design? Oh. Well, uh, this bottling is bottled for this man, middle guy, Toshi Suzuki. He's the owner of Highlander in Tokyo, and he opened Anaba Highlander in Ninyocho in Tokyo two years ago. Mm. So same time, this is me, myself, and the Toshi and the owner of Rada Tsuyoshi Kitakaji and it's a young lady. No, she's not young. <laughs> Yumi Yoshikawa, she's a global brand ambassador of Chichibu Distillery. So we talked over two, three years, maybe we can do something together. And we actually set up a Highlander in Chichibu, in Chichibu, a oh, beautiful building. Yeah, well, you've, been, you've been to? Yeah, very Highlander. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, last year, so, so good. This is actually nothing to do with you and me, and possibly nothing to do with me, this project between Toshi and Tsuyoshi, but kindly they used photo we took quite a while ago. So the, whole, the whole party's there. Yeah. How, how many bottles were, were made? It doesn't say number of bottles. Ooh, if I look at maybe two, two, 220 something. So Hoggy. Yeah, mm -hmm. for those at home who are enjoying this whiskey, we, we imported just a very small allotment uh, a few months ago of this, but it's all sold out. So, yeah, there might be some available on auctions or in, in the Asia market as well, where it was destined. But, yeah, there's, there's none as far as I'm aware available in a, for sale in Australia today. So I'm pretty sure Japan but, is sold out as well. So <laughs> yeah. good luck. I think the Lada bottling, uh, same as like a Highlander in bottling, oh, he. His bottling cycle is much faster than, much active than Highlander in, but soon as they, or he bottled, just go like this. Mm. He had a great reputation back home. He always chose good cask. Yeah, it's a good following after so many years of choosing some really good cask. <laughs> mm. So with all Could the Highlander in uh, Tatsuya-san, you are involved in all of them? You... Yeah. Okay. All your Highlander inns, Tokyo, Ningyocho, and, uh, and Chichibu. No, you, you... one a Highlander in Tokyo and a Highlander in Ningyocho. That's everything owned by Toshi, run oh, by okay. Toshi. Right. No, same kind. Just sharing, oh, yeah, sharing okay. the sharing name. name. Yeah. And the Highlander in Chichibu is joint venture of myself, Toshi, Tsuyoshi, and uh, not so young Yumi. <laughs> 
Yang Yumi itu. Yang Yumi. Yang Yumi. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. For, the, for those wondering at home what's going on, we've got a small tasting about uh, 10 people here at Heath and May's house. Uh, so that's why they're bringing me in my whiskey in each session. Uh, we figured we'd do it hybrid this time, but we might jump onto whiskey number three. We'll take this opportunity, which is the Water of Life, which is our exclusive bottling uh, between the whiskey list and the Elysium whiskey bar that Tetsuya has kindly bottled up for us. Uh, Tetsuya's got it there on screen and, and Kelvin as well. This this is to celebrate our, our fourth birthday, right, Kelvin? We we almost share That's the same right. date. Yep. So, oh, so yeah. happy happy birthday, guys! Happy birthday to you guys too. Cheers All to you. Right. Cheers to you. And, and uh, thanks for selecting a good cast, Tatsuya san. <laughs> yeah, uh, this project I can't remember received a message from uh, Chris. Spoke to Kelvin and the Yao. This is we are planning. Do you think you can help Tatsuya? Then I said, yeah, always. And from before this project, yeah, whiskey list is started importing whiskey from Highlander. So I said to guys, yeah, I'm delighted to do that. But initial plan was obviously as a majority, people want to try single malt, single cask. Then choosing cask, as I say, it's really difficult to pick the cask today. 20 sample received, shape, shape, pesh, rubbish, reject. Sometimes makes me angry. Then one broker come to me, this is not single malt, this is a blended malt. It's doesn't say anywhere on a label, maybe whiskey list website, uh, Facebook say this is cask of Oldney, which is mix of fatting of Glenfiddich, Barbeni, and Kinindi. All belong to the same company, William Grant. So it's called Oldney. This is 1997, is it? 1997 should be somewhere say. Doesn't okay, fine. This is one of the oldest old me I can see in the market at some moment. And I taste it, you know. Sometimes I know many people like single cask, single malt. Once I mentioned blended whiskey, blended malt. People's reaction, well, I only drink single malt. But my opinion is if it tastes good, I drink anything. Mm. So I just took sample, then I taste it, then wow, this is good. This is ideal product for Australia. And seems like it, many people like it. So I feel very good. Oh, yeah, very, good, very good selection, good. very nice. The first thing that this, this, this whiskey, um, the first flavor note that came to me, and I've been kind of talking about the room before we started, um, after the neck pour, we let it breathe for a couple of days. I'm getting a lot of unami coming through on this. Uh, so yeah, every year. It, it's so, uh, I love it. And the fact that we've got 163 bottles for Australia, this is the largest, the first Australian release from the Highlander Inn. Uh, but also the largest allocation I think we've ever had of the, the label here in Australia. So mm. everyone on, on call here, you're the very first in the world to try this Australian exclusive. So thank you so much, Tetsuya, Kelvin Yeo, and, and Chris Ross, who did all the heavy lifting at the beginning to, to put this uh, bottling together. It's, it's quite a special one. And uh, I don't know how true, the, when I offered this cask, I was told, uh, Tatsuya, you can use the name of old name, but after I paid, I signed everything, then they come to me, oh, I'm not sure about you can use the old name or not, but probably I can tell this is actually old name. And to be honest, old name or it's not old name on a label, no label, doesn't make any difference to me. Because so nobody knows old Yeah, yeah, because the whiskey is <laughs> good anyway, so. It's good, yeah. So Maybe. This, just, just to clarify, do we want to uh, explain what teaspooned whiskey is, uh, just so everyone knows um, why this is not called a Belveni, for example? 
Uh, those three distillery blending or marriage together, it's called Olduni. Uh, as a name belonged to William Grant. So some case we can use Olduni, but this case may not be used in the UK because I have maybe 10 bottles with me. Once I put Olduni, maybe I cannot right. sell. Yeah, copyright. And the water of life, as idea come from Chris and Kelvin. And uh, maybe I can tell, maybe that much proportion is Kinindi. And that much portion come from Grenfellick and the rest is Balvin. Yeah. So curious for, and you sometimes you can see on the market, this kind of a blended malt as a bottle as a single cask. How did this kind of cask come to be? That was a vetted before for a certain other purpose and then recasked? Hey, first, I know Olduni is, it's not like a marriage process. Like a, when I start this project, send message to Chris. So this is butting of this, 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 three distillery. Oh, wow, this is almost like a monkey shoulder. I never thought it mm. is like monkey yeah. shoulder. The biggest difference is old knee and the monkey shoulder. This is from day one when spirit come out from the still, still clear, tastes like a vodka or across to the vodka, marriage together. So blended and still, at birth. Yeah. yeah, but monkey shoulder, for example, at a pretty much young whiskey, but the marriage blend of those young whiskey, Grenfellick, Barveni, and Kinindi. So that's the biggest difference. Right. Marriage for 23 years and the marriage for only three months makes massive difference, yeah. taste-wise. And it's so not, not so common to get uh, many uh, blended, blended at birth cask. Uh, surprisingly, many company doing yeah, like a uh, whiskey we are going to taste very end today, Oishi grain whiskey. We do, not Oishi grain whiskey, we do once a year called Oishi whiskey, means delicious whiskey, meaning of Japan. So they are all pre-mixed, shaded, blended whiskey, several different malt whiskey and uh, one or two different grain whiskey marriage together since more or less day one. So surprisingly many company does. Recently I've got offer another blended malt and those four malt whiskey and all belong to different company, mm. but from day one marriage together, building a cast. Only four malts as well. Only four malt distillery, okay. wow. yeah. Strange. <laughs> so I don't know, more than we think, yep. whiskey industry does this whiskey for branded whiskey or for the, yeah, the old, many, many whiskey company these days trying to protect their brand or brand image. So some distillery, some company, they really dislike to sell their stock as single cask or yeah. single malt. So teaspooning is very common. Hardly, we cannot buy some yeah. grain Felix single cask today, or they don't sell. Always teaspooning, 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 of grain Felix, 1% of Barveni, or same thing for Barveni. Quick question, what's the most, I guess, widely available uh, IB bottling distillery? Is it Coila? Kalila is one of the distillery, yeah, because that uh, used to be one of the scale-wise distillery scale, the big distillery on Isla used to be. Still, maybe they make, I don't know, not top of my head, 7 million, 8 million liters they make, and before, become this whiskey boom. They had maybe overstock. 
Yeah, same as the Buna Harbin. But even Buna Harbin today, difficult to use that name. Some cask, we cannot name Buna Harbin. So whiskey number two, we taste it. Secret Orkney, mm. PT Smoky one. Not allowed to use a name, but we know, everybody know what distillery, which distillery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's funny things. Yeah, why we need to be secret? I do understand company won't protect their brand, brand image. But mm. for the Highlander Inn, we don't spoil that brand image. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're too close to all of these distilleries close by. <laughs> I'm just reading a few of the comments. So Dominic, uh, good, good friend of all of ours here. Uh, great praise from him. Very elegant coconut on the front, undercurrent, tropical fruits. Incredible balance. Long live the blend. I totally agree, mate. Thank you for those wonderful words. George says uh, there's a saltiness, a lovely saltiness on the very back palate. Um, are you guys getting that? Definitely savory. Yeah. yeah. Mm, mm, does mm. saltiness, yeah. And this bottle definitely needs time, yeah. time in the glass, or you know, after you open, maybe at the neck pour is going to be very, very tight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now it's actually much more expressive than when when we tasted yesterday and the day before. Again, much more of the fruits come out now. A bit of custard as well, mm. sweet custard too. Yeah, mm. but again, I spoke earlier. I didn't make this spirit. I didn't blend. I just pick the cask. And when I pick the cask, it's not like, a, mm, is it good or should I buy? I should should or shouldn't. Never thought like that. Yes. From day one, once I taste it, or maybe second time, I buy it or yeah. reject. Well, uh, if I recall correctly, you know, you came back to us. We gave you a budget. We said, you know, we want to retail it for 200 something Australian, which is a little bit less than what we're selling this one for. But you said, I found a great cast. It's over our budget, but you have to do it. It's that good. <laughs> that's, what you, that's what you said yeah. to us. And so we trusted you, right? <laughs> yeah, and great, great collection. collection yeah. Yeah. And I just want to mention about the label as well. Um, so this one is using a Japanese brush painting. So it's done by my friend Junko Azukawa, and uh, she's based here in Melbourne. Very, very talented lady. So uh, approach her. I, I've loved her work for a long time. You know, I used to hang her paintings in the restaurant I used to work at, and uh, approached her and said, "Would you like to join us on this project?" And she she said, she's "More than delighted to." Yeah. So gave her the title "Water of Life," and she came back with a couple of uh, concepts. And this one, Chris and yourself, Tatia San, you really like this this particular painting, right? Yeah. yeah nice. Excellent. Really fits in with the concept. If you at any uh, like a Japanese festival in Melbourne, then there's a thing. Sometimes there are exhibition, and she does like an open life painting work. It's pretty cool. Kelvin, I think we need a commission some artwork for for the office and for the, <laughs> the bar there. Easy, let's do it. <laughs> hit her, hit her up on uh, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, she's really, really good. Man. Definitely hit her up. <laughs> it's good. All right. Well, Everybody that, likes the whiskey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone's loving it. Um, Great. Perfect. Ron, Ron says, just reading through the last few comments, I've got pears, jasmine, now coconut. Love the nose. Mm. And Winnie says, nice. Actually, also have a 97 L. Dewey. I, I can't even pronounce it, guys. Sorry. Uh, Al Dewey. Al Dewey. Al Dewey. Uh, picked two. The taste portfolio, very similar. But I think this one is more ripe yellow fruit. Mm. Where'd you score that one, Winnie? Let, let us know. And thanks for joining in from Hong Kong, Winnie. Thank you. We might jump onto whiskey number four, which is the Klein Rich. Klein Rich. Oh, this one here. Yeah, Klein Rich has an artwork from the Hans Delis. The uh, entrance. Sorry. Uh, I'll need another glass. Thank you. Okay, this one is annual single cask release 2019. Only managed to get uh, 284 bottle hogshead. Yeah. And uh, I do like whiskey. I have a big passion for whiskey, but also business. Somehow I need to make some money from the bottling. However, 
almost fall in love with this cask, but wasn't cheap. Guy who sold this cask to me, it, we used to work together in Morrison Bomo or Santori. So now he moved on to this business. I move on to Highland Dying. I really get on well with him. His name is Chris. And Chris, but not cheap. Any chance you can do some small discount? And his answer was no. <laughs> Fine, but I do appreciate those black and white. Business friendship is friendship. Business is business. So, but still I purchased. So this whiskey wasn't cheap for me and wasn't cheap for people who bought this bottle. So what I did, you know, hardly ever made profit. Okay, I made some, but very small because I really wanted introduced to many people. So let's taste. First of all, I do like Kleinisch. I'm a big fan. Possibly one of my favorite distillery. And a really amazing cast. The first thing you notice is significantly different from the other three we've just tried. Mm. So syrupy. And uh, my right hand man in a hotel, a bar manager, Billy, he's a very dedicated whiskey man, but he not really into Klein English. So I don't know, some people know may get this kind of distinctive flavor. Yeah. It's slightly more subtle, gentle flavor, right? Yeah, and the strength is quite, it's not high. Uh, 24 years old, still keep 57% is possibly ideal environment has been matured, ideal environment for 24 years. Mm. If you look at other three whiskey we tasted today, Glenelgin, Secret Orkney, and Oldney, they are all more or less similar age, but strength is much lower, mm. just above 50. Am I right? Yeah. I think Glen Elgin is 50.7, Secret Orkney is 51.7, and Oldney is 52.6. At normally, if it's two cask, I like both. Equally, I often pick weaker strengths for the age. Reason why is I believe, yeah, this is, yeah, this is scientific, scientific fact, has been kept, has been matured, warmer, drier environment for the period. So maturation goes to faster. So Glenelgin 24 years old was 24 years old, that's a fact, but Taste-wise, possibly equivalent of 26 years, 25, 26, 27 years, because maturation went faster. That's why Japanese whiskey, biggest difference is between whiskey from Japan and whiskey from Scotland, same method, same ingredients. Okay, each distillery has slight difference, but biggest difference between those two whiskeys weather, climate. Japanese spirit has been matured, warmer environment. So maturation goes to much faster. So that's why when I pick the cask, I often go to age around 20 years old, but strength is just above 50. But this is 57%. So this is uh, one of the best uh, ideal environment, temperature in a warehouse. Scottish whiskey industry, say even temperature all year round, something like a 12, 13 degrees, 13 degrees all year round, that makes good Scottish whiskey ideal. But 
American whiskey industry, bourbon boys, they say those temperature difference, cold, hot, cold, hot, that kind of climate create good bourbon. So that's just different idea. So this is perfectly matured environment. Mm. Yeah, still 23 years later, keep 57%. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Question for you, Tetsuya. All these whiskeys yep. that you bottle, are they <laughs> casks that you're getting directly out of the distillery's bonded warehouse? Or is there a wholesaler in between? Like, how does it work, your process? Are, are we tasting the, the, the Klein leash that has come out of the distillery, basically, their, their warehouse? Or has this been kind of, this cask been moving around Scotland a little bit before you got your hands on it? How does that process work? Uh, first of all, nowadays, how do we, 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 don't, we don't buy cask directly from warehouse. But whiskey is not like a wine. Once you fill the cask, they might make, they, they may move once from warehouse from here to here can be happen, but once we bottled or filled in a non bottled filled in a cask, put in a warehouse, doesn't move. Even the ownership change. If I buy cask from somebody, ownership changed, but cask never move hardly ever. So I bought this cask from the, one of the independent bottlers, I don't mind to mention, uh, from Douglas Lane I bought. But this cask has been matured, one of the DRGO warehouse, belong to some stage or from day one, Douglas Lane, and I purchased cask from Douglas Lane. So always, most of cask has been matured distillery warehouse. If it's big boys like uh, Gordon McPhail, they have their own warehouse. So they might mature their own warehouse in an alien, but mostly still kept in a distillery warehouse. Is that clear? Yeah, thank you. That makes sense. What does everyone think of uh, whiskey number four in the audience? Just reading some of the comments. Uh, there's more sherry cask claim leash being put up by IBs lately compared to the bourbon casks. Is there a reason to this or just what was available at the time? Uh, generally speaking, the percentage of using cask in a whiskey Industry, 95% is American white oak. Yeah, 95% is the American white oak or American cask from timber or cask from America. And a very few percentage, maybe 5% using sherry cask. So that shows sherry cask is difficult to buy. And I know some company, Macaron, for example, and the Santry buy quite a lot. So good. Sherry cask or not, not necessarily good. Many sherry casks goes to few companies. So some new release, very difficult to find sherry cask from some distillery. That's why American white oak cask or a barrel or hog's head is dominated. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, thank you for that overview. It's, um... It'll be interesting to see what happens in the next 10, 20 years in terms of cask availability as well. Kelvin, are you seeing similar things of other bottlings you work with? I think referring to what Chris is saying, just so happened, I guess, at the moment, a few bottlers have released sherry cask matured clinalish. Just so happens that that batch of whiskeys are ready. So they're releasing the sherry cask right now. But back to what Tatiya san said, most are still bourbon cask being filled there, yeah, not sherry cask. And then depends uh, when they're available, yeah. And basically, we don't drink sherry. Sherry, you guys don't drink sherry. I drink <laughs> So if everybody drinks sherry one bottle a month, yeah, whole, whole everybody in a whole 
country or planet, this globe. Surely, sherry producer start making more sherry. <laughs> I, th I think that might still not be enough for them to give up. <laughs> but some sherry is actually very good, amazing. Oh. Yeah, we use a, we use a lot of sherry at the bar actually. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So I don't know. Hope people enjoy this. I always believe when I buy the cask or when I bottle whiskey, you know, BMW has must have a BMW quality. Mm. Uh, equivalent, you know, you need to pay BMW price. But if you buy, a, let's say, Nissan you know, micro quality, micro price. So whiskey. It's the same way. When I buy the cask, pick the cask, oh wow, this is good. BMW quality. So, BMW, this <laughs> this BMW price. <laughs> Correct. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we opened a few um, of this bottle at the bar actually, and obviously everybody loved it. So, so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disappear right, right. very quickly. <laughs> mm. And not just as they're drinking. <laughs> Yeah, tasty. Excellent. Yeah. I think we might jump to the very last whiskey now. We've got time. Whiskey number five, the Oshi. Oishi whiskey, yeah. Da -da -da. Yeah, Oishi grain whiskey. That's we started Oishi, Oishi whiskey range from 2016. I've got offer good quality blended whiskey, very sherry. And the idea comes from uh, talking to people, guests, customer over the world. Everybody say, uh, let's say, can you recommend something? I say, yeah, uh, this is some, some sort of blended whiskey. This is very good, single cask, single malt. And 99 out of 100 people say, oh, I go for single malt because I only drink single malt. <laughs> Yamazaki, Hibiki, single malt blended, or oh, I have a Yamazaki place because I only drink single malt. I don't drink blended. Eh? Why? Some people have a wrong idea. Single malt whiskey is good whiskey. Blended whiskey is not good whiskey. As I say earlier, beginning of this tasting, sometimes receive 20 sample of single malt, single cask. And Again, you guys, okay, maybe swear all the time, which I don't, excuse my language again, shit, shit, pesh, rubbish, send back, reject. That kind of single malt, quite a lot. So why people don't like, look down almost, blended to whiskey? That's the Oishi whiskey idea come from. So Oishi whiskey generally is kind of exclusive, 35, 36, 38 years old blended whiskey from Highlander. But this one, Oishi grain whiskey, this is actually grain whiskey. It's not blended. So I will go offer this cask. Again, I'm repeating the same story. Rubbish, rubbish, shit, pesh, pesh, pesh. And this broker actually contain one grain whiskey, obviously. I never bottled grain whiskey under Highlander in name. I always believed grain whiskey is it's not easy whiskey to handle. So I tasted this whiskey very last. Surprisingly, the whole batch, 20 samples, this one was winner. So mm -hmm. I decided to bottle this grain whiskey, spoke to owner of Rada, Tsuyoshi, Kitakai. What's the best way to promote grain whiskey? Have you bottled the grain whiskey? He said, yeah, he did but not that young, 14 years old. So we oh, just end up to the idea. How about Oishi grain whiskey? That kind of idea. And he said, possibly that's the best. So we use this name, same designer as Oishi whiskey, Takeshi Abe. He designed a few, some level of Hanyu card series. Mm. So, who are these people on the label, Tatsuya san? The character, who are the characters on the label? Uh, not 
particular meaning, I just said to designer, this is kind of casual whiskey. Mm -hmm. So, and you create everybody drinking, especially this Corona pandemic. We cannot see people, we cannot meet friends, we cannot go to pub, pub, blah, blah, buy the shot. So just idea of everybody gathering together, right. having a kind of a casual scene. Social drinking. And the idea Takeshi did, yep. everybody holding tumbler like this. So everybody, but yep. current design, final design, uh, this young lady holding tasting glass. Mm -hmm. So, first design was everybody holding tumbler. Oh, people may think this is whiskey for highball. It's not. <laughs> you, can highball. you can enjoy whiskey as it is, like we are doing now. So, I asked him to change. Right. Let's taste. Maybe you guys already taste. Yeah. Mm. Mm, very grain. So yeah, what, what is a grain whiskey for, for some at home who maybe have never tried a grain whiskey before? We obviously have single malt whiskey, but what, what's a grain whiskey? Grain whiskey is, okay, today's grain whiskey in Scotland mainly made from any type of grain, but mainly wheat, because that's the cheapest ingredients. And uh, the ingredient is different. Also the method, single malt whiskey, distilled twice in a pot of steel, like a kettle using twice. But grain whiskey, they use a continuous steel. It's not romantic. It's a big, gigantic steel. So they can produce whiskey like a almost 100% ABV kind of stuff. So young, or let's say zero years old, grain whiskey, same as vodka. Yeah, if you taste new make spirits of Ardbeck, still you can taste, oh wow, smoky, this is Ardbeck. I can imagine 10 years later became like a Ardbeck 10. If you taste new make spirits of Macaran, you can taste, yeah, I can imagine this is 10 years later, taste of Macaran. But grain whiskey, to be honest, one from Invergodum, one from North British, tastes all same. I cannot tell. So Very whiskey need to rely to cask. That's I believe. Mm. Many people possibly tasted like a 32 years old grain in Bergodon, 42 years old, some other grain whiskey. It's pretty good, but not many people enjoy or like young grain whiskey because as I said just now, character is not much character. But this cask is sherry cask, you believe it or not, and uh, second, uh, refill sherry. Please. And least wise, this is European oak. <clears throat> sherry producer, they make or they use two different type of timber. One timber come from Europe and another timber come from America. So European oak is slow growing species, American white oak, let's say, maybe 80 years, big enough to chop off the tree and make a cask, but European oak is slow growing species, takes a little longer, possibly 100 years old. And the landmass, America is big, and the area we grow uh, oak in Europe is not big as America. So less timber, less oak, European oak in Europe than compared with America. So European oak sherry is kind of kind of rare, yeah, kind of rare. I'm not saying again, European oak sherry is better than American white oak sherry, just provide different types of flavor. Mm. People often talk about, look at the bottle, oh, this is a sherry cask, bourbon cask, da, da, da. Normally people talk about timber. Timber is equally or possibly more than what previously filled. Timber is important. All whiskey we tasted first for whiskey using American white oak. So you get often get coconuts, vanilla, what else? 
yeah, like a stone fruit, but European oak, even second refill, 14 years old, you can get some sort of tanning. Mm. Can you get tanning? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of toffee or, or some sort of caramelization of, of some sort of sugar in this as well. It's quite interesting. It's a little That's, bit similar to like, a, um, it's almost like a rum character. Yeah, it it's is. like brown sugar, yeah. To be honest, even 35 years old, 42 years old, grand whiskey, it is rummy. But yeah. some whiskey is tastes like a rummy, rummy, or sometimes tastes like a little bit brandy-ish. That's the unique things about whiskey. Whiskey, you can describe, wow, almost like a rum, and almost like a cognac, brandy. But when you taste rum, no many people say, wow, this rum tastes like this. <laughs> when you taste cognac, no one say, wow, it is, tastes like a whiskey. That actually shows the flavor variation of whiskey. It's, it's actually enormous. Must be you all agree. Mm. Can you hear me? Yeah, definitely. What's everyone think of this whiskey? Very thick on your tongue. It is thick, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's really, I had the first sip, but it's really strong. And then the second sip, it's just, it went down and it's like filled my whole mouth up now, but it's like a nice, it's like a, like a liqueur going down your throat and it's just sitting there in my, in my mouth. It's really, really nice. I actually like that. The first taste was like, wow, but now it's like, yeah, that's really good. Well, well Toby highlighted it's a 63.9%. So it's a yes. very, very <laughs> high IBV. That's, that's probably yeah. the first sip is burning, but. Um... Yeah, oh, it was, I had to stand up and walk away and have a bit of a cough, but I come back and, had a sip again and it's like it's oh it's quite nice i actually like it yeah we're, we're getting towards the the end of the tasting guys uh we, we try to stick it to an hour i'm just going to launch a quick poll uh to ask everyone what's your favorite whiskey tonight so um if you don't mind uh spending the next minute just voting what is your favorite tonight it's always interesting to see Oh, God, my biggest problem is I've just clicked up at seven o'clock, but I'm an hour <laughs> late, I think, because the time differences. God, I wish I'd have realised that. So, drats. After, I have to just taste them all now myself. So, <laughs> bit of a bummer. Um, for anyone who's um, just dropping me a private message, drop us an email, cheers at thewhiskeylist.com.au if you want to purchase a bottle, uh, and we'll, we'll sort you out that way as well. I, I just don't have uh shopify open in front of me right now so just drop us an email uh david and etc who's just messaged me cheers at the whiskey list.com.au and we'll, we'll sort out your purchases and ollie can i add to that um for guys that are in melbourne there are a few bottles available for sale here at the bar so if you're getting quick there will be some bottles available for purchase of the water of life only that one <laughs> i will call that bottling all the other bottles please get it from the whiskey list okay where are you where are you in melbourne i'm in fitzroy Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll go. I haven't been out for a while because of COVID and a few things. Oh, you're life. in Melbourne, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm in Melbourne. I've got to get out and do a bit of um, sniffing around, and see what's going on. But you guys had a, you guys had a, a drink and a bite to eat the other day. A drink and a bite to eat. Yeah, oh, something. You know, I don't know. It was on the whiskey list. I think. Anyway, I'll sort that out another oh, time. Oh, they did a catch oh, no, up. There, there was a. That was, I think Oli was cooking some stuff on the hibachi, so. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I just, I've just got to get out and about and sort of do a bit of, yeah. But Please drop by that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I've been buying a lot of bottles, but not getting out, so. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do it a bit more, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's look at the, uh, the results. I'm going to end the poll now. So what do we got here? Uh, the favourite tonight was the Klein Leash. Eight votes, 47%. So... You know, okay, unfortunately, that one's, that one's all fully sold out. But the next favorite was the Water of Life. So there's plenty of bottles yeah, available. Awesome. Great to hear, guys. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, I'll, I'll, Kelvin and, and Yao and Tetsuya, do you have a few more minutes available for us? any other questions from the audience? Yeah, or are you guys no, short no, on time? No, 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 no problem. problem. No problem. Well, before I uh, open up the floor to everyone else, I just personally wanted to say 
thank you so much, uh, Tatsuya, for your time today and also just your, your, your friendship and then hard work over the last years with us uh, bringing your amazing bottlings to Australia and then even just yeah, helping us launch our own very first Highlander in Australian exclusive. This is something very special for us. So thank you so much for, for the continued friendship and, and looking forward to the many more bottlings in the future together with you as well. <laughs> and next time you can fly into Sydney as soon as uh, all this COVID's over um, pop down into the best whiskey bar in Australia, the Elysium Whiskey Bar, Fitzroy, Melbourne so seriously they, they've got the craziest selection of whiskey ever, so Kelvin and Yao, the, the two wonderful gentlemen there running the bar uh, if you're ever in Melbourne please stop by and, and say hello and, and they'll look after you That's my, whenever I'm down in Melbourne for work I always make sure boss is like, what time do you want to fly home? I say, last flight out of Melbourne. I, I need to go. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, Ollie. Thank you. Thanks hopefully, for the time. Hopefully see you guys at the bar. It'd be great. All right. I might, um, yeah, basically, if you have any other questions, put it into chat. Otherwise, thank you, everyone, for staying tonight. And, and just feel free to unmute yourself if there's any other questions you want to ask in person. But thanks again, Kelvin, Yao, Tetsuya. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Ollie, for hosting this. Thank you. Cheers. I'll be up to see us. Cheers, guys. Thanks for the support. Okay. All right. Uh, how many people? Gonna stop recording, guys. It's a formal bit done. Stop recording.